Edie Falco, uh, you play Jackie Payton in Nurse Jackie, which is uh, currently airing its seventh and final season, and it's just got a you know a few weeks to go. Uh, you know, with The Sopranos, you also had the experience of, of saying goodbye to a long running show and a cast and crew. Uh, is any different? Um, yeah, it was plenty different in a lot of ways, but uh, the saying goodbye part feels the same. It just feels kind of yucky. You've gotten to know these people really well, very intimately, kind of. You know, you'll work long hours, and then you just say goodbye. It's the nature of this business, but it, it's, uh, you know, it's never easy. Jackie has been been interesting in that it's not been the story structure. It's not like the simple rise and fall of a, a hero or anti-hero. You know, Jackie has been much more of a roller coaster yeah. over the course of her addiction. Uh, and sometimes it seems like she's better, and then she sabotages herself, and then back again. What have you thought about that trajectory over the over the many years? I think uh, one of the things I've been proudest of is that that mimics my experience of addiction in the world, you know, with people I have known and loved, that it's not linear. And uh, just when you think things are great, they get bad. Or just when you think things are irreparable, they get good, you know. Uh, it's just the nature of that kind of uh, lifestyle. So, yeah, I, I'm glad that it, we didn't do, like, a made-for-television version of, of what it, it's like to be addicted, that it's, it feels, it felt to me like it matched uh, real life. Uh, it seems like uh, Jackie, uh, you know, if she's even remotely able to wiggle out of the consequences of her actions, then she ends up going back to her old habits. You know, have there ever been points uh, over the course of the series where you thought that, you know, this must be rock bottom, but then, you know, she surprised you by how she, you know, manages to escape it again? Yes, I have, but I felt it more often in my life, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a very familiar feeling, yeah. Well, what have been some of those moments where, where you sort of thought, okay, this is rock bottom and, and, and finally it's, it's going to get better. And then, you know, and then you're like, oh, she, she sort of, she sort of managed to, to, you know, sort of avoid, uh, you know, being able to sort of reflect on herself and really see truly, you know, what, what she's, what she's doing. Well, there were a number of times where it seemed like things had gotten bad enough and, you know, she'd go to rehab or, uh, you know, she really seemed to make a clean break. But then, you know, her work stuff very quickly got chaotic again. And um, it is my understanding that anything that you put in front of your sobriety, you know, staying clean, is you're going to lose. So in my experience, you know, she would be doing better and it seemed like she was doing well, but then she would get caught up in stuff at work and she wasn't going to meetings. In my mind, I'm thinking she's going to get slammed again. I just know it because that's that is basically the way it works. It sneaks up on you, you know, when you think when you're not paying attention, it's it's, um, you know, they say in AA that uh, while you're getting sober, your disease is outside the door doing push ups like, you know, it's, so it just waits for one weak moment to get in there. So. Um, I sort of knew if she wasn't 100% committed to getting better, that she wasn't going to. Uh, as an audience, we're, we're sometimes kind of ambivalent about Jackie. Like, you know, we're rooting for her, but, uh, you know, rooting for her to get better means rooting against her to get her way a lot of the times. You right. know? Are you ever ambivalent uh, as an actor about, you know, whether you root for Jackie or, or, or when you're, you're rooting for Jackie? Uh, that's a good question. No, I mean as you know trying to be inside of her head you know i always kind of wanted her to get what she wanted but you know being you know the person playing her i knew that that would ultimately not be the best thing so you know but my job at the time is really to give as much voice to her point of view as possible so um you know if she if i had had any say over her whatsoever the show would have been two two episodes long and you know she'd be sober so but she kept trying to do it her own way and, you know, as written. And uh, that's the, you know, it, it, it'll bring you down. You know, as, a, as a, you know, compelling as, as Jackie is as a character, I, I sometimes wonder if Nurse Jackie is actually really the origin of how Zoe Barco becomes a legendary New York City nurse, given how she's, you know, grown so much over, you know, the course of the series. Right. What have you thought, thought about the character's growth from, you know, coming uh, well, you know, she went from being naive to being a little uh, jaded, 
basically, but I think a, a necessary trajectory, certainly for anyone working in a New York City public hospital, you know, that things are not always as they seem, and that even people you trust are going to let you down. Uh, and though they seem like they're telling the truth, they may very well be lying. I mean, all those things that I think were incomprehensible to her when she first started, you know, she's she's been down that road, and I think she is smarter and uh, maybe a little bit sadder as a result, but a little better able to walk the uh, the road of a near, of a public hospital nurse. Do you think you know she's she's sort of maybe as a as a, as a person sort of on her way to becoming more like Jackie or, or maybe you know like like a, a, an ideal more ideal version of Jackie without all the all the baggage and 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 the addiction? Maybe yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, maybe she you know she can let Jackie be a cautionary tale, you know. Like what would happen if you if you start to fall off the rails a little bit and you you don't keep your eye on the ball, which is really just taking care of the patients, you know. Um, but yeah, she has everything inside of her to take all the good stuff and leave the rest of it. Uh, you and Merritt Weaver uh, have had some you know uh, you know memorable scenes together over the course of the series and 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 this season too. And just the episode that that aired last night as as we're recording this, you two drove to Pennsylvania to pick up Jackie's daughter, and and Zoe finally got to to vent her anger about how Jackie's decisions and behavior has affected her. Right. What were those scenes like to shoot together in that car in that episode? Uh, it's it was sometimes hard because I'm so. Uh... I'm so moved by what she does, what she's able to do, that um, it was hard for me to stay entirely in character, you know? I get so excited just by the way she works and by the kind of magic she weaves, you know? Um, and it was never the same twice, so it was always exciting to see what would happen next. So yeah, I mean, in that way, it was a little harder for me to kind of maintain the, the, the um, you know the, the the false self there, and to to be more than just a fan, because uh, I'm you know because I am that first and foremost. But at the same time, I have a, a day's work in front of me. So uh, another you know very complex relationship uh, on the show has been between uh, Jackie and and you know Eddie, the pharmacist played by Paul Schultz. Uh, and talk about ambivalence. You know we we want them to be happy, but they seem to be you know the worst thing for each other at the time. Like they got engaged right after doing this twenty two thousand dollar drug deal. Right. You know what what have you thought about that relationship between them? Is it is it a good thing ultimately or 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 a bad thing? Oh gosh, you know, that's a rough question. It's, you know, it's all a bad thing, I think, you know? I mean, it's, it's uh, the, the ground that it's built on is, is like, you know, tissue paper. So, uh, you know, if both of them were sort of able to get their, get their lives clear, free of all kinds of addictive problems and, you know, uh, other kinds of illegalities and trying to sort of pull one over on somebody, um, who knows what would be left as far as affection is concerned between the two of them. But there's just so much baggage, as you said, with both of them that, you know, you want them to be happy, but just like you want your kid to be happy by eating 40 pounds of ice cream, it'll make them happy, but in the end, it's going to kill them, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, in, in the, based on the show and who these people are as we've gotten to know them, you know, yeah, I'm glad they're happy, but it's, uh, you know, it's dangerous and ultimately not great, not a good thing. You know, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, early on in in the series and in their relationship, you know, she was you know lying a lot to him, and it seemed like she was sort of more corrupting him. But then in the later seasons, as he became more aware, it seems now he's like this active and enabler, and and he's 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 the one really feeding into her to her problem. Uh, you know, more sometimes. Yeah. Do you think you know which way do you think it goes? Is is he more bad influence on her, or her more a bad influence on him? You know, I tend to think it's her influence on him because uh, I think he thinks he just wants her, whatever the um, the cost. I don't really think that he's at heart a bad guy. I think he doesn't realize the cost of what he's actually doing. He's doing it so he can get the woman he loves, you know, and Jackie just wants what she wants for her, you know. Uh, so I think, you know, I mean, I don't think she's a bad person. I think she's just pretty messed up. Um, so I tend to think she, if it was, if Jack, if Eddie w was able to get his life together and realize that she's kind of bad news, she'd find somebody else. 
you know, because she is she is a corrupter. I'm afraid. I mean, that's the way I feel about it. Uh, this season, we also saw, you know, uh, another dark turn in another relationship for, for Jackie, you know, between her and, and the hospital administrator, Gloria Acolytus, played by Anna DeVere Smith. Uh, you know, they were allies for, for so much of the series. Uh, what, what has it been like playing them against each other in, in the seventh season as, as more adversaries? Yeah. Yeah, it was upsetting a little bit because I, I uh, have always loved um, working with Anna and she's so, she's so much fun, but she is, in fact, a formidable woman and a formidable actress and can be intimidating. You know, uh, her performance uh, as this administrator, you see the way people cower around her, you know, characters. And I think I always felt comfortable uh, knowing that Jackie was on her side. To, to suddenly turn into just another person who's intimidated by her or who, you know, who is not on her good side. Yeah, it was unpleasant. I, I, uh, I, so I much preferred being her adversary. I mean, her, her friend. I mean, whatever that word means. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and, and Acolytus comes down so hard on, on Jackie more than anyone else, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, after all her transgressions came to light, at, you know, at the end of, you know, season six, uh, while like Zoe, for instance, is, is, you know, really wants to be more forgiving and, and really, you know, hope for, for the best. So do, do you think Acolytus has the right idea or, or, or you know, in, in taking such a hard line or, or does maybe Zoe have the right idea in, in terms of, you know, forgiveness? Uh, you know, that's a very personal choice. It's, uh, it depends entirely on uh, one's own experience with these things. But as a hospital administrator, I think Acolytus has it perfectly right. I mean, she's got to look out for the patients and for the other employees. And I think um, Jackie's a good nurse, but, you know, at what cost? And uh, I think she really did give her a, a number of opportunities to kind of turn it around or to show Acolytus that, you know, you've been right to, to, you know, hang on to me and to think the best. Um, and Jackie just, you know, she keeps taking advantage of that, I feel like. So I, I think Acolytus is in the right to kind of, to really uh, hold the hard line at this point. You know, she's, it's not like she, it's not like the, that's the first posture she took, you know, she gave her a lot of chances. Uh, something interesting, you know, you know, your roles on this show and and the Sopranos have had in common is is that you know in both cases we've watched your children grow up on screen and you've watched them grow up on set. You know, in this case, Ruby Jarens and and Mackenzie Alagim as Jackie's daughters. Uh, what has it been like working with them and watching them grow and develop? Uh, you know, over the over the series. It, that's another really hard one. It's one thing when you're an adult and we're all adults and you sort of know the nature of this business, but they were teensy when we started, you know? And uh, to follow kids throughout some pretty formative years of their lives, you know, and watch them literally grow, not just in years, but in size, you know, they were becoming humans before my eyes and then just see them go. It's really, um, it's not natural, you know? <laughs> um, but it is again, part of the, the way this business works. It's, um, and yes, it was the same thing with, uh, you know, my, my Jamie Lynn and Robert Eiler on Sopranos. It's just, and now Jamie Lynn has a, a son, you know, and it's just crazy. It, uh, these were, she was like, I think 11 when I met her. So yeah, it's hard. It's very hard. And you love them and you wish them the best and, you know, know that their real parents will take good care of them. But um, yeah, it's hard. And then, uh, you know, playing, you know, their mother on, on, on the show, you know, do you, you know, do you ever like, uh, on set as actors, do you ever like give them, you know, advice in terms of, you know, career and, and, you know, because you're in, in, in you know, you've had this very good run, you know, yourself uh, as an actor, you know, you know, where, where do you see things going for them? Um, you know, if they had ever asked, I would certainly offer. I don't know that I would just, you know, go and advise them if it was not something they were curious about. Also, they, they have real parents and mostly they were with the kids on the set. And uh, I tried to let there be sort of a professional distance when they were with their parents so that I'm not trying to get in on their, uh, you know, their off screen time. So um, they're both such well put together kids too and well advised by their parents and by their own representation. So, I mean, they knew that I was always there to talk to, but we kept it mostly uh, sort of professional and, you know, with a few hugs here and there. 
Uh, a lot of new characters uh, have, have come into the show over the course of its run, like, you know, Bobby Cannavale, Morris Chestnut, you know, Julie White, you know, in this season, you know, introduced uh, Tony Shalhoub as, as Dr. Bernard Prince. Uh, and like you, he has a strong theater background. He's done a lot of TV, won a lot of Emmys. Uh, what has it been like bringing him onto the show for, for this last season and working with him? I just feel like we were so lucky. I was so thrilled that it was something he wanted to do. Uh, he's really as good as it gets, not just uh, talent-wise, but just his personality was such a perfect match for us. He was kind and respectful and uh, you know, funny and warm. Um, I just loved having him around because you spend a fair amount of time. I mean, you spend the majority of the time sitting around waiting to, to have something to do. So it becomes important what these people are like, you know, and Tony was just the greatest, just great. I uh, really cared about what he was doing, took it seriously, and um, the outcome was important to him. And uh, I was just thrilled. I was thrilled that he had uh, agreed to be a part of our show for the last season. Uh, I, I've seen all but the last two episodes of the final season, so I don't know yet uh, how it's going to end, uh, you know, but without giving away any of the specifics, of course. Uh, what was your response, you know, what was your feeling when, when you first read that final script and saw, you know, saw where this story ends? Um, you know, I'm very happy with the way it ends. It, it, uh, it feels um, in keeping with the show all along. There's so much pressure about this last episode syndrome, you know about having to make it the most special thing. You know, we, I, I feel proud of what we've done all along. So it feels in keeping with the show um, throughout. And I didn't, you know, I couldn't ask more than that. So, uh, you know, um, I'm very proud of it, the whole show. Uh, you know, just to maybe allay people's fears, does it, does it, you know, it, you know, not end with like, just like a sudden cut to black and- <laughs> <laughs> I the way, I'm sorry, you have to watch. Uh, what, what happened after uh, shooting uh, your, your, your very last scene? You know, was there, was there a celebration on set? Did oh, yeah. you... you know, the last scene of the thing was the last scene of, that we shot. So it was deeply sad and, I mean, tons of crying and a big party on set afterwards. And, you know, it was, a real, it was quite a love fest, I have to say. It was really just such a lovely time. Um, and really hard, you know, really hard and with all kinds of promises. Oh, we'll stay in touch. I mean, you know that, you, you know, life goes on and you do the best you can, but you won't be seeing these people every day, certainly not in this, this particular combination of people, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a very big deal. It was a lot of years we spent together, so it was sad and, and handled so beautifully, I thought, you know. We, a lot of respect and a lot of nice things said and done. It's something about, you know, having that, that common experience. It's like, you know, when you're, when you're in like college or something and you make yes. all these friends and you know life is going to take you in these different directions and you'll be in touch, but it won't be quite the same. Exactly right. Yeah. You know, you do the best you can to, uh, to say goodbye. It's just crazy. Yeah, and now that, uh, you know, Nurse Jackie uh, is ending, uh, do you have any uh, immediate plans going forward, like maybe do theater, film, more TV, or, or perhaps a, a well, you know, well-deserved extended vacation? <laughs> I'm reading lots of stuff. Um, some of it's interesting, some of it's less interesting, some of it's more interesting. Nothing is anything until it's something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a lot of talk until you have a call sheet in front of you, you know? Um, so, but it's, it runs the gamut, really. Some theater stuff, some film stuff, and some TV stuff. Um, but first and foremost, I'm taking the summer off and I'm just gonna be with my family and uh, take a real, a real vacation. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens when we get back and which thing actually comes to be. It's kind of an exciting time because there's, uh, the sky's the limit. It's anybody's guess as to what will actually happen next and I'm completely open. So it's uh, kind of exciting. And uh, you know, you know, doing Nurse Jackie was it was so different from The Sopranos. Like when you get done with with a, a certain project, you know, is there sort of a you know a, an impulse to to do something just like completely different and, and and stretch and try out something new? Yes, for sure. Yeah, and and the you know the funny dichotomy there is that all the calls I get are for drug addicts now or nurses. You know, just like for the longest time, I got Italian wives, and I thought, no, sorry, did that. We're moving on. So you know. Um, the stuff that is appealing to me most greatly these days is nothing like um, the last bunch of stuff I've done. It's very exciting for that reason, yeah.
Is there any particular kind of role that, that you like think about in your head that like this would be completely different from what I've done in the past? I would I would love to, to give this a shot. You know, not so much. I I love to read the stuff that people have thought of me for, and then immediately I'm like, oh God, this feels great. I would love this is completely unlike anything I've done. And then I'll read another script and think, oh no, this is great. Wow, I never would have thought of this kind of character and in this time period or you know what I mean so I, I'm not a writer in that way so I, I don't have you know I, that part of my brain doesn't work uh, when thinking in terms of what I want to do next it's these writers these you know great uh, imaginations that exist um, in some of the writers that I've been exposed to and it's you know sort of thrilling well, uh, you know, congratulations again on on this final season of, of Nurse Jackie and the whole series uh, and 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 you know everything you know sky's the limit going forward as as you mentioned and and also you know best of luck at you know the Emmys coming up you've been nominated every year and uh, uh, we we're expecting at least that this year will, will be no different. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. I appreciate it.